Right, morning. Everyone's still chipping in, but we will start on time. Uh, this meeting is recorded, so if anybody wants to see it afterwards, they can. But I'll also be sending out <clears throat> all the slides that you'll be seeing uh, as well after this meeting. So, so fear not about writing extensive notes because I'll be sending them out to you all afterwards. <clears throat> Apologies for the throat hay fever is doing, doing me in this morning. Anyway, my name is Tim Major, you can see from the screen. Um, I look after the members across the Thames Valley. I'm pleased to see you all here today. Just want to demonstrate for you the depth and breadth of some of the events that we have today. So we've got views from Westminster coming up in the next, uh, in the next uh, month. And you can see we've got Steve Baker from High Wycombe and James Sunderland. Um, whilst they may not roll off the tongue, if you, you're in those um, particular constituencies and you want to understand what's going on, then it's your opportunity to pose those questions. Next one, Jay. Hybrid working, how will, your, how will your business adapt? Well, that's a, a question we're all being faced right now, isn't it? Whether it's uh, just for our alone workers, how do we carry on working in the same way? <clears throat> or is it, how do we look after our staff, whether it's contracts, well-being and performance management. So join us on the 24th of June for that particular event. And perhaps the biggest event that I'm going to recommend that you uh, come and join us is next month. Last week, we surveyed a um, majority of our businesses across the Thames Valley to understand what the current health, what the sentiment is, what it looks like. And because it's a short, sharp uh, presentation, in terms of the way that we get the survey numbers, then we can quickly roll out the figures to you so that you can understand what that looks like to your business. So come and join me on the 8th of July. Hopefully my throat will be better. When I'm joined by uh, BDO, they're gonna help me interpret the particular findings. And with those findings, you'll be able to understand what the impact could be on your business. So quite an, an important one that you can just go to our website and you'll be able to join that particular uh, event. But really put that as a date in your diary, 8th of July, just for an hour. Thank you, Jack. But without further ado, most importantly, let me introduce you to uh, the other two presenters uh, on today's Voices Are Better Than Mine. Uh, from Generate UK, uh, I would say award-winning Generate UK, there are award winners, uh, Joe Bailey, who's the MD, and Jack Turner, who's been looking after and helping me, I should say, produce these wonderful slides that you're about to see. I will send them all to you afterwards. In terms of questions, as they arise, do feel free to pop them in the chat box and I will pose the questions to Joe and Jack at the end. Over to, to the two Jays. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. Um, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, Thank you, Tim and Thames Valley, for uh, letting us uh, come on and talk a little bit about uh, the subject matter today. Um, just thought I'd give you a little bit of an overview about General UK quickly. Um, so we are a full service marketing agency. We actually started in, in, and founded in 2008. So we've seen a lot of change over that time within the search engines. Um, we've actually uh, been a partner with Google for, for over 10 years now. Uh, so I hope we're qualified to talk a little bit about uh, the changes that are upcoming and we're going to talk about today. Um, we've also actually been a member of the Thames Valley Chamber for 10 years. I actually received my certificate in the post this week, which was, uh, which was great. And then we will put it up with uh, great pride. Um, the fact that we have been members with the Thames Valley who have, do a fantastic job supporting businesses and have supported us in our growth over, over the last 13 years um, we we obviously measure ourselves against other agencies as well we're 25th in the Y Hive 100 league table which is um, the top sort of 100 agencies across the, the the south of England so we're quite proud that we're sort of quite high up in that uh, league table um, we measure ourselves again um, winning the awards are great uh, and thank you for that recognition Tim um, and we have won a, won a few over the years but we, we also look at accreditations and trying to make our business better um, we 
are the only agency in the UK to actually have our customer service excellence plus accreditation. So having technical accreditations like Google uh, accreditations and GDPR accreditations are great, but also so for us, we are a people organization. And as a result, customer service is massively important to us. Um, but above all, we believe uh, in businesses uh, to understand businesses and, and their sort of ongoing demands their challenges that we are facing all the time, but also the opportunities in marketing. We started the business um, in the SEO and technical development world uh, and, and have grown our services from that over the last 13 years. So today's agenda, um, which uh, we'll just have a look at, it's an interesting agenda because this is this is happening now, um, and we are constantly trying to communicate and and look at where exactly when it's all going to kickstart. But we've been told it is mid June, so we're going to look at why Google has changed their ranking criteria once again, and they continually do so. Um, we're going to look at actually what core web vitals are. So the LCPs and the FIDs and the CLSs and all these acronyms, we're gonna sort of dive into it in a bit more detail to sort of give you an understanding of, of what they mean and what they are. But above all, what that means for, for businesses. Yeah, because, you know, every, I guess over the years, business owners, marketeers, that we've all wrestled with trying to address these continuous changes in Google. And, and, you know, how much time, how much money do you, do you invest in trying to adapt your website um, for the algorithm updates that Google are constantly putting out? Um, but if we do that, how do we measure the fact that, you know, your website has made some changes? How do you measure that against the core web vitals uh, that are coming into play? Um, and then sort of how do you prepare for, for that upcoming change as well? So that's the agenda. Um, as Tim mentioned, we will be taking questions at the end, so feel free to, to plug them into the, uh, the chat box um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, what I think everybody realises and, and understands is that Google is a content delivery platform. So ultimately, it aims to provide the best experience for users um, by supplying, obviously, the best possible results. So if your website, as we all have, most of us have one, that's why we're here, provides a negative user experience by proxy, that's you know, harming Google, the trust in Google as a search engine. So Google are continually evolving, trying to make that user experience better for their customers. But if we look over the years, it's been a bit of an evolution of ranking signals. Um, Panda was very much about, just to give you a quick recap, and I don't want to teach people to suck eggs if you, if you understand all these already, but some people might not. Panda was all about penalising sort of spammy links when everybody had those sort of loads of links and sort of to all different areas and trying to gain more links, the more, more, more um, rankings you're going to, going to get and the better rankings. Well, they really sort of cut down on that and, and um, that was a big big, big change at the time. Um, and some of you might not be old enough to remember it, if, if I'm honest, because that was going back sort of towards sort of 2000, I think it was sort of 2008, 2009, Jack, if, 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 I'm, if I'm right. Um, then we had Penguin, which was more about um, sort of on-page content and the quality of that on-page content. We then moved into Hummingbird, which was all about sort of more relevant personalized search results. We met, then moved on to Pigeon, which was all about local. And that, that was a big one for, for local businesses to make sure that their, uh, their websites were optimized for local search. I don't know if anybody um, looked at uh, RankBrain, but that was an interesting one. It was about boosting sort of Google SERP features um, with more information. So your search results showing more information about your business. So that was an interesting uh, one. People needed to adapt for that because otherwise you miss out on the opportunities there. Uh, and mobile, it was all about mobile experience and making sure that what you see on, on your, your laptop resonates on your, on your uh, mobile device. So we, we, we're now moving on um, to a new 
a new update. And uh, I'm going to pass you over to Jack, who is one of our experts at, at Generate UK, who works with our clients to continually improve uh, and, 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 and deliver uh, against against the sort of the changes in the uh, in the SERPs and, and the search results. One thing I would uh, just leave you on before I pass over is, as a business and as a business owner, we are um, we're constantly looking at our, our, our website from a technical perspective. We're doing it more so at the moment, obviously because of the changes that are happening. But before that we even got a window of core web vitals we we were li- we were probably twice a year we were looking at our website from a technical perspective looking at the performance the page speeds the loading time the security and it's really i can't stress how important that is as a business that you've you've got a website that is technically built correctly and is is actually um, performing at a level it needs to be because all the marketing you do in the world uh, will be have a negative impact if your website isn't actually performing, isn't actually structured correctly in um, in in the way it should be. So, um, just I'd be interesting to uh, do a little poll with everybody in terms of understanding how many times they do look at their website from a technical perspective. Um, as I said, twice a year before this, but at the moment we're looking at it constantly. So I'm going to move, uh, pass you over to Jack, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, the current um, experience and the signals that we, 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 we have within our website. Thanks, Joe. And hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so as Joe's mentioned, the Google's ranking sort of uh, factors have constantly evolved over the years. Uh, and what we sort of landed with now in terms of page experience is the following. So mobile friendliness, so how accessible your site is on a mobile device, I think it's current time of writing, about 60% of all searches are made on the mobile. So it's really important to make sure that Google Drive especially, that you can deliver a good experience on that device. I mean, we still see websites that aren't responsive to Google's changes, um, and that is providing a more detrimental impact to their rankings than a lot of factors such as keywords, links, all the usual SEO sort of factors. Um, another one is browser safety and security, so making sure you've got a valid SSL certificate and also making sure the content that you have in your site hasn't been hacked to provide any sort of harmful content or maybe any viruses or bugs for users. Because as sort of Joe's mentioned, by any negative impact to the experience of the user is by proxy going to affect the experience of Google because they're the ones that recommended that site to the user. And then finally, looking at intrusive guidelines, sort of ads and pop-ups, um, that potentially could interfere with that mobile experience. So I know we've all been there, maybe on a mobile device, uh, pop-ups come up and you can't get to that little X in the corner because it's too small to click. Those sort of things are a big no-no with Google. Um, so Google has always been looking at the user experience to a degree, but what it's trying to do now is expand that into uh, some new factors. So these are the new experience uh, signals. These are the core web vitals. So you've got the largest content for paint, which is the time it takes for the page's largest piece of content to load. You've got the first input delay, which is the time it takes for a page to become interactive, and the cumulative layout shift, which is the amount of unexpected layout shift of the page content. So if we start with the larger contemporary paint, that could be anything from, say, a big image that you've got in the banner of your website. It could potentially be a video that you've got hosted on the site, potentially uh, a large chunk of uh, body like text if you've kind of got a big sort of text-heavy website. Whatever it takes the longest to load, that's what Google's trying to measure here. The second, the first input delay measures interactivity. So as that page is loading, can you potentially click on any of the CTAs? Can you scroll properly? Does, um, is there opportunity to say, click the video as it's loading? Those sort of little bits of interactivity, essentially the clunkiness of your website as it loads. And then lastly, the cumulative layout shift, which measures the loading, say, um, of sort of assets and media that potentially could shift around. So you've got a massive image on the site, but it hasn't had a, uh, a set dimension, of, say 1,200 pixels by 800 pixels. So as a result, the theme, your website is uh, expanding the image out as it loads, bring it back down to the sort of the box it's been set to fill in. Um, and it's causing all the rest of the content to shift around the site as it does so. I mean, a good example of this is say the Daily Mail, which has so much content sitting within its site also got loads of ads. So as those ads are filling in a bit later than the rest of the content, it could be pushing an article to the side. So as you go to click on that article, you accidentally actually click on the ad instead because Google or the website, sorry, has pushed that content you wanted across the page, which again, 
is not a good user experience and something that Google wants to cut down on. So why is Google doing this? Um, well, the positive view is that the Google wants to provide a great user experience. More cynical view is that Google wants to save money. Um, Google is a billion dollar organization who has to analyze billions of web pages every day, which is a very costly exercise. If you think of the server power, the data centers, the employees needed to manage that, you are looking at millions of, or potentially hundreds of millions of dollars sort of each year to do so. Um, shaving milliseconds off this, so having a faster like, loading speed website is gonna save them a lot of money when it comes to calling. So um, it's really important to make sure that your website is running that good user experience to Google because they're gonna reward you because of that, because, well, they're gonna save money. So what does this actually mean for businesses? Well, it means that the loading time of your web pages has just got a lot more important. So if your website's gonna load slowly, potentially gonna shift around the page as it loads, then it, you're probably gonna see your rankings drop. Google hasn't said to what degree your rankings will be affected, but they have said that if you're not passing core vitals, you are gonna be impacted. Um, so if you're a business that relies a lot on organic search traffic, then you need to be addressing this as soon as possible if you're not already, because it could have severe repercussions for your ranking ability. I think it's important to note at this stage as well um, that there has to be a trade-off between sort of web design and core web vitals. I think in Google's eyes, they would be happy if every web page was sort of plain white, just text, potentially some small images, a little bit of video, something very easy to call and understand. But we know from a user experience perspective that not everyone wants that. Say you're a marketing agency like ourselves who want to impress our clients, then we need to be able to show our technical capabilities to design great looking assets, which is something that Core Web Vitals doesn't always want to afford. So you do kind of have to mitigate that impact between rankings and that great first impression with users. So just find that happy medium between the two. If you, Google also said that as soon as you hit a good mark for Core Web Vitals, you don't have to improve it further. You just have to stay good. So you don't have to chase the glory of the old, like the perfect website, you just kind of have to hit those standards. So the, there's an opportunity here to uh, to improve your sort of search ranking positions just by competitor activity. So uh, a stat very kindly provided by the Thames Valley Chamber, um, Search Matrix recently analyzed about 2 million web pages and found that 96% were offering a page experience that was substandard to core web vitals which is quite ridiculous if you think about it, like the amount of content on the site, so much of it has, is not providing the, um, the benchmark to what Google has set, which is a really great opportunity for everyone on the call today to take advantage of that. Uh, a slow website, one that's got a bad loading experience is going to be affected. So simply just by having a good enough experience, you're gonna benefit from this. Um, Google has said that if you do hit core vitals, you will not see your website rankings increase because in their eyes, it's the benchmark of what you should be doing anyway. But if a competitor is gonna be impacted and it's gonna drop their rankings, someone has to replace it. So there will be an opportunity to improve your search positions as a result of this work. So how do you measure core vitals? Well, there's a couple of tools you can use, all handily provided by Google. So the first two, the user experience report and page insights actually work in tandem together. So we'll go through that in a second. And there's also Google's search console which is basically a webmaster tools for Google to tell you sort of the queries that you're ranking for, any problems that Google finds with your website, and, and also just a way for you to communicate with Google to tell them um, what pages you're creating, what needs to be ranked, what doesn't. But again, we'll go through that in a bit more detail. So firstly, we'll look at PageFeed Insights. So PageFeed Insights analyzes the content of your web page and then generates suggestions to make that page faster. This is gonna be your best friend when it comes to Core Web Vitals because it provides uh, not only lab data, so sort of a sterile environment to learn page speed and loading times, but also real world user data to say, okay, on average, um, this is how much time it takes for your largest content uh, to load. This is the first input delay. This is your cumulative layout shift from real world users. What we tend to find is there's a bit of disparity between user data and the Google lab data. So I would try and find a happy medium in the middle of that because Google is gonna say, well, in terms of our lab data, potentially you're not as quick as you could be, but in the user data, you're sort of satisfying that requirement. So where are you gonna sort of find that win there? 
uh, in our sort of experience, it's the average between the two that sort of tends to be the real world um, figure. Um, Google will be prioritizing user data because that is where the experience actually comes from. So do try and keep a focus on that as against the lab data because you will find with the lab data, this will change sort of every day potentially. Did you think of the conditions needed, um, the speed of your internet at the time, the speed of their servers at the time, potentially the amount of content it has to crawl within that sort of time period will all play a factor in what your lab data will be. So do take it with a pinch of salt. So I thought I'd go through a couple of common page, uh, sorry, common page speed issues that uh, we tend to see when it comes to page speed sites. So the first is unused code loading. So the way we kind of talk about this um, is in terms of difference between a bespoke website and a theme website. So if you consider it like a sweet shop, on one hand, you've got a pick and mix aisle. On the other hand, you have the prepackaged suites. A theme website is basically the prepackaged suites. You might get a box of celebrations with Mars, Snickers, uh, Twix, but also a lot of bounty. And I don't know about everyone else in the call, but I cannot stand bounty. But you kind of have to roll with the punches on that because you're buying the box. Um, what this means, essentially website terms, is you might want feature A, B, and C from a theme website, but you don't want D. But actually, D still has to load because it's built into the theme. Whereas in a pick and mix style, you might be paying for the premium of choice, but you allow to sort of cherry pick those features you want for a website, having a fast loading page experience because of it. So what we'd recommend doing in that case is just speaking to your development teams and have them, your agencies, whoever that is, to just see what code can be removed from your theme websites just to make that a faster experience. Secondly, you've got the long main thread. So basically the main thread is what is the code that's being uh, run to basically load your website. So typically within themes, uh, you'll have a large parcels of code loading at the same time, all buying the space and sort of trying to get the page loaded as fast as possible. This can actually slow down your web page speed because there's so much that has to load to get to where you want to be. So if you can break that code down into smaller chunks, uh, we'll kind of go through some ways you can do that a bit later. That will be really good for your web page. Um, another one that we commonly see is render blocking resources. So this is code that gets in the way of the first load of your page. It could be some tracking code you've got from a third party, potentially some plugins that have to buy before your page can load. There are loads of different render blocking resources that can be sort of getting in the way of your loading speeds. So it's really important to make sure that you're just keep an eye on what's currently on your website and just getting rid of things you don't need anymore uh, if they've been there for years potentially. Another one is off-screen media loading. So again, one we see quite commonly is sort of big images, big videos sitting quite well down uh, the bottom of the page. Um, they don't need to load at that point because the user's only going to see the above bold content. So what you could do is potentially set up lazy loading to just say, to the website, do not load this content until the user reaches it. That will help your page speeds because you're not prioritizing bottom of bold content that isn't going to affect the top of page user experience. And then finally, um, server response times is another big issue you find. So uh, if you think of sort of like your web hosting provider, you're potentially going to be on a server with like 500 other websites. So all of those websites are kind of vying for the power of that server to deliver the content that they have. If you've got a couple of uh, other websites within your server that are, say, massive content sites, have loads of images, they might be taking away some of the capacity that your website needs to load faster. So it's always worth talking to your hosting providers to just find out there's any options to optimize your servers or to potentially move to a new package that's just going to provide a faster loading time for your site. So moving on to the second uh, measurement tool for web vitals, but people search console. So search console tools and reports help you measure your site's search traffic and performance. You can help fix issues and just have help basically make your site shine in Google search results. So within Google search console, you can see which queries you, uh, your customers are using to reach your website. You can submit sitemaps, the individual URLs for crawling. So you can say to Google, hey, I've just made this brand new page. Would you mind taking a look at it? Rather than just waiting for Google to come and find it on its own. Uh, you can also get alerts and potentially any issues that Google's found that you need to fix, such as core vitals. Um, and you can also see how Google is actually sees your page itself. So you can look at things such as the coding, the structured markup, you can look at the keywords, all the things that Google sees about your page. And then you can basically make judgments on where you need to optimize based off this. 
So Google has recently introduced two new tools into Google Search Console, which is the page experience and call with vitals tabs, which perfect for today's talk. So in here, you can see a top level summary of where Google thinks your pages need improvement, where you've got good URLs that are passing core vitals and potentially any pages that need desperate attention because they're not passing it to any degree. Um, Google Search Console, same with Page Insights, it's completely free to set up and really recommend using both of them to just really optimize for core vitals. So we've kind of gone through sort of all the risks involved with core vitals today, um, potentially the impact it can have on your rankings, but I really wouldn't worry too much um, because there's so much good content out there to help fix it. So Google have kindly offered up loads of free guides on how to optimize each of the core vitals. Um, however, they're quite technical and they're quite long-winded. So rather than sort of sending you the links and saying, off you go, we thought we'd try and help summarize those important elements that you need to, uh, to fix to make sure you're providing good loading experiences. So the first is the largest contemporary pain. So this is the time it takes for pages largest content to load. Um, ideally, you want to have an LCP of two and a half seconds or lower. That will be a good score within Google. So we've covered on it previously, but the first thing you can do is upgrade your hosting. If you have a faster content delivery network, a faster server, then that is going to provide that content quicker to the user. So do look at upgrading your hosting if it's just something you haven't looked at in say five to 10 years. Um, a second thing you can do is using caching. So caching basically takes like a virtual snapshot of your website for repeat users. So say you've got a website that um, doesn't really change its content too often. You might upgrade the blog once or twice, but the homepage content, the main product pages, the service pages, that content doesn't change often. But what you can do is you can set up caching to tell, your, to tell Google to just take a snapshot of the content as it is and just show that to repeat visitors who already loaded the page because they've loaded it once and the content hasn't changed, well then why bother loading it again? Just have it as a snapshot of the page. Um, this is a really handy way to improve page speeds for returning visitors. Another thing you can do is minimize that render blocking code. So if things are getting in the way of loading your content, try and remove those barriers. So if, if you've got third party code that you don't need anymore, just get rid of it. If you've got plugins that sort of are slowing down the way page speeds can, like, to a massive degree, Again, if you don't need them, get rid of them or find a better solution because these things are going to be getting in the way of that main content loading and you just want to make sure that there's no barriers to that content getting loaded. Um, another sort of common one we see with clients is compressing media and file sizes. I know we've all been there where we've been in a rush to get something live on a page and we just throw in the image as we have it. Well, we need to really consider the size of those images that we're putting on the web. I mean, in some cases, we've seen clients with 20 megabyte banners that are having to spend ages loading, especially on a sort of slow server, because they're, they're trying to pick up that whole barrier as well as the rest of the site content. It's really just gonna be an annoying page speed experience for both Google and the user. So really make sure to compress the media to the smallest sort of size it can be while still providing sort of that aesthetic um, that you're looking for in your site. Same for file sizes. So any big white papers, any guides, eBooks, just try and compress them to as small as they can be so that you're not gonna have any loading issues. And then finally, uh, looking at lazy loading. So as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to sort of that off-screen media, lazy loading is something which can be set up within sort of most SEO plugins uh, to provide, um, sorry, I got distracted then. Um, lazy loading provides uh, like off-screen media deferral. So you can say to, use, to your website, do not load this content until the user has reached it. So that's really handy if you've got a big video at the bottom of your page, any sort of banners that are loading, maybe loads of sort of gallery shots of your products or services, just tell the, uh, the website to only load those when it's time to load it. That will save so much time and will really help when it comes to your LCP. Uh, so your first input delay, as we sort of talked about earlier, is the time it takes your page to become interactive. So ideally you want a score of about 100 milliseconds or lower, which is very rapid. But if you think about sort of the, from the time of click to the time of interaction, you want to have that be seamless. If you sort of click a button and then nothing happens for, I don't know, a couple of hundred milliseconds, then you're going to be concerned if the page is quite clunky. You might want to go further because you might find, well, actually if the whole website's clunky, I don't have time for this, you might leave. Um, the ways to get rid of this is to reduce the impact of third byte code. So 
basically what's happening when you click a button is you're firing an event. That could be something like a button click, play the video, it could be a scroll on the page, it could be any sort of event. What can happen in those cases is that third party code is monitoring and tracking that. You think of say Google Tag Manager, if you're using it. Um, if you're having that set up, then as you're clicking that button, Tag Manager has to fire to register that click. That could be getting in the way of your, um, your input delay. So if you can get rid of, of any sort of unneeded uh, tracking or any sort of unneeded third party code, please get rid of it because it will help when it comes to your page leads. Secondly as well, uh, breaking up those long running main thread code into smaller bite sized chunks. A great way to do this is by using a web worker. So typically when loading a website uh, and executing scripts, the HTML page will try and load everything at once and it will finally become responsive um, when the script is finished running, which is not a great thing because say you've got the top of page content ready, but you haven't got the bottom of the page content ready, then you're potentially not going to have an interactive website until that's finished, which again seems quite ludicrous when the user's not going to see it. So a web worker is basically a bit of JavaScript that runs in the background independently of other scripts, so it doesn't affect the performance of the page. So you can continue to do whatever you want, click, select things, and the web worker will just fill in the rest of the blanks in the background. So the UI has sort of that opportunity to showcase what it can do or not worry about the sort of back end functionality of it. And then finally, you've got the cumulative layout shifts. So the amount of unexpected layout shift of official page content. So ideally, you want this to be 0.1 or less. The reason why this is slightly different is because it's not measured in time, it's just measured in the shift that Google finds. So you want that to be as close to zero as possible and just have a really static experience. So the quickest way to do this is just to set size and attribute dimensions for your images and videos. So if you tell your website, this box here with this image is 1,200 by 800 pixels, then it will set that dimension. You won't have an experience where the page or the image, sorry, is going massive to then shrink down again. It's gonna stay within that box. That's really helpful for the user because it won't have content shift. It's really helpful for Google because it will know the size of that image as it's crawling it as well, um, which might help when it comes to your Google image searches. Um, so really important to set those attribute dimensions and it's something a developer can do quite quickly and easily. So do speak to your teams if that's something you can do. And then secondly is to just keep your web page as static as possible and just reduce the usage of moving elements. So we've all been on those sites that have like a million different things going all at once, sort of animations, loads of high impact media, which all has to load at the same time. That could be shifting content all over the place. It's not great for the CLS. So try and keep your web page as static as possible. But we have touched about that sort of balance between design and functionality. So if you're a website that sort of relies on providing that great first impression as part of your sort of branding, for example, then just try and find a happy medium. Don't sacrifice all of it. Just see what basically you can afford to get away with and just keep testing. So it might find that actually five of the different elements you have in the page still can be used and part pass core vital. So just don't get rid of everything, just try and make it a usable experience. So hopefully with all the sort of the tips you provided today, um, you can sort of lift the core vital trophy per se. Um, so to do that, there's sort of a summary of what we can do. The first is to keep your website simple and static. Just make sure it's a very functional page that's been well built. Um, it's got a solid foundation from which you can put a good UI on front of it. Um, also make sure to reduce media sizes. Again, it's one that we see all the time. Just to have a look at the content in your page, see the size of it. If it's say a couple of megabytes, just try and compress it to say, I don't know, 500 kilobytes as sort of an example, just something quite small, but still gonna look good on your desktop. Um, also look at setting up lazy loading. If you've got sort of big off-screen content within your sort of key pages, just tell your website to load those at a later date and just focus on top of page content. It will really help to speed up your, uh, your loading times. So we're also setting attributes for those images so that it's not gonna shift the page around as they load. Again, quite a simple fix, but could have a big impact on your CLS. And then focus on your coding. So breaking up those long running codes into smaller bite-sized chunks, potentially using a web worker to, um, basically focus on the UI and running the code in the background, not try and load the entire thing at once. And then also removing those unnecessary third party scripts that you might have just have hanging around from previous sort of marketing campaigns or that just happened to be there when the theme website was built. 
And then finally, upgrading your web hosting. It's another thing that people don't tend to consider when it comes to sort of content delivery, but will have a big impact potentially in how your website loads. So I hope that some of the things we talked about today will be really helpful for your business. Um, if you're still sort of getting to grips with core vitals and you need a little bit of support of where you can improve, we'd be really happy to sort of support you with a free audit. Uh, so our SEO team will sort of provide sort of all the insights and the improvements you need to make to sort of really make those big impacts with World Vitals. Uh, if there's something you're interested in, uh, just give us an email. So we're info at generateuk.co.uk. So I think I'll pass back over to Tim now and we'll take some questions. Thank you, Jack. That was really good. A few, a few questions and I've got <clears throat> a few questions that uh, from people who couldn't attend today as well. <clears throat> I'll just kick off the one we've had uh, from uh, living in the in the audience today. <clears throat> How do I get my web website free of these attributes? LCP, FID, and CLS. How do you get it free of those attributes? Sorry. How do you remove them? Effectively? How do you remove them? How do, is it, it's more about I think the score. How how do you get the, you pardon, score, the score for each of the attributes? Yeah. So that would be in the console, would it not, Jack? Yes. Yeah, you'll see it in the PageSpeed console in terms of uh, what your current attributes are, where those improvements need to be. You can see all of that there. And we've given sort of a measurement idea for LCP, it's 2.5 seconds. For FID, it's 100 milliseconds in terms of interactivity. Uh, and for CLS, it's um, 0.1 yeah. is in terms of the, the what's that? The Is that equal to point? equal to 0.1. Yeah, so point, uh, 0.1 or lower. So as close to zero as possible to be what you want to aim for with CLS. Yeah, I think it's interesting because being being a business owner, I look at things in a slightly different way to potentially Jack, and I'm sure there's lots of other people on, on, the, on the, uh, the, the call today that looks at things in a different way because everybody's faces with different pressures, aren't they? You know, in terms of, from a marketing perspective, you mentioned about brand, Jack. So you know, the MDs of companies want to see their brand in all its glory, looking amazing, really slick in terms of a video. And, and they're very visually focused, a lot of, the, you know, people at board level. But what they don't understand is actually by having that level of design and beauty on their site, which is, which is great from potentially a user experience, it can have a massively negative impact in terms of performance. Um, and I think there's... There's, there is a balance, a balance in X, but it's, it's almost up to the, the job of the marketeer to to inform the the owner of, of the reasoning of behind their, their decisions, and which might not get them the, the lovely two minute long video that they want to show on their website, you know, so it is quite an interesting topic, but I think it's uh, one we come across all the time and often it's our jobs that we work with clients to to help them make uh to, to help them sort of lay out uh, a strategy to show the owners direct to the business why they're going down this route rather than just going down the the full design elements that everybody always wants on their site i've got another question what what do you consider the most important core web vital it's a great question i think uh google would wants you to rank for all of them. It's essentially the kind of the answer to that. It, there isn't sort of like a more important one. They're kind of together as a three things that you need to sort of optimize and improve. People have said uh, that you can kind of get two out of three and that'd be good enough. Um, but in our recommendation, you kind of need to focus on all three of them as the most important thing. I think if you're thinking of it from a user experience perspective, I think the one that you want to maybe focus on least could be the LCP because um, the interactivity of that page is going to be more important. The consideration of that is that the longer it takes for your content to load, the longer you potentially could keep your customers waiting. And we do find that with every second that it takes to load a page, a few more customers will bounce off. So you do want to keep that as low as possible. But if you can maybe, if it's three seconds rather than two and a half, I wouldn't worry too much. But if you can get the CLS and the uh, first input delay as sort of optimized as possible, that would be great. Okay, and again, I think you've probably answered this next one, but <clears throat> good to recap. What's the biggest change you feel that you can make to improve your core web vitals? So, Joe, if you've got any feelings on that one? Mm. 
What's the the biggest change? Yeah, the biggest, probably, I guess, the biggest single change that you can make um, to improve Core Web Vitals. I think you can only tell that by um, looking at the results of the web of the website. You know, so based on um, the the results that are coming back, you you obviously then focus on the biggest um, change that's going to make the biggest impact on on the site. And this is you know part of the work we do with our clients. Uh, we we do build sites, we we market sites, but also we support websites. So the support and maintenance um, agreements that we often have in play with our clients is all about making the site perform and looking at the stats, looking at how we can tweak the website to make it more secure or or load better or give it more uh, bandwidth within the the hosting environment it sits in, et cetera, et cetera. So it is sort of an ongoing process. Um, this isn't going to happen overnight with many, many sort of websites. This is going to be a, a bit of a slow burn, but it's all about now is about addressing these issues. So in, in a sort of few six months time, you know, you're, you're sort of in a position where, you know, your website is, is completely, uh, optimised for Core Web Vitals and, and it continually moves forward because, you know, in six months' time, there's probably going to be something else that comes into play that they're going to, Google are going to be looking at. So it is all about sort of getting those foundations set up correctly uh, to, to, to rank. But, look, let, you know, look, put the, uh, run the reports, get back the, 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 the results and then make that decision, basically. And that, that would be my, my answer to that question. That's almost the action that needs to be done after this uh, webinar, isn't it? Is to run the reports. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If anybody wants that report, then, then please feel free to, to come back to us and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get that report back to you and, and yeah, free to chat with you uh, about how we could and you can implement. Perfect. That's, uh, that concludes the, the Q&A. Okay. Have we got any, any more questions? Any final points you guys would like to make? Um, no, I, 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 like, I think I've probably said, I said what... From, from my perspective, there are, there are different opinions and there are different requirements for every business. So I think our job is to understand what that business is trying to achieve ultimately at the end of the day. Um, and each marketeer will have their own pressures about what the, the business is trying to achieve from their website. So um, it's, it is a fine balance. You, you're not going to have everything right. I think you saw on the... Uh, on our stats, we, we're sort of at 90% in terms of um, the, 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 f the figures that we put in play for our sort of page in time, page speed, etc. But we're always looking to improve. We're always looking to improve. So it, it doesn't stop with Core Web Vitals. There are so many other different fundamentals with regards to a website uh, that's going to help it rank and, and outperform competitors. But, you know, it's if you put the time and effort in now, I believe, we, you know, we believe as a, as a business, you know, you're, you're effectively sustaining your rankings. You're keeping them where they are. And if you do that, other competitors won't be. And as a result, you will rank higher because they will drop. And as Jack said, someone's got to fill that void. So it is a good opportunity to get your website um, set up correctly and, uh, and ranking. Perfect. So simply take, take some action after today. Isn't yeah, it? take stock, have a look. Get yeah. the reports done, and then uh, ha have a have a look where you want to put that time and effort in compared to what what the uh, the data is saying. As the as the government always says, they're they're led by the science, and we are also led by the data. So it's a uh, it, it it is um it's a process. Thank you, Joe. Thank no you, problem. Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank you for this morning, and thank you for joining everybody. Um, there will be a recording of this um, webinar put up on our YouTube channel, which everybody can watch. But it just really remains for me to say thanks ever so much. Thank you for joining. And to the guys, what can I say? Top job. I will see you again very soon. Thanks, thanks. everybody. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.